What's going on guys? This is Empty Box, and it's time to make another video, I guess. Anyways, we're going to be talking about the newly released 1998 Champ Cars for Automobile East 2 as part of the Race in USA Part 2 DLC. I'm going to just go ahead and talk about the car specifically because I already recorded some audio, tried to record a video, and... Well, I spent about 10 minutes just talking about Cleveland, and only Cleveland, and then by the time I talked about the cars in the typical long-winded fashion that I do, it, I, the video just ended up being too long, and uh, I wasn't happy with it, so I just want to focus in on one thing at a time. We'll, we'll come back to Cleveland later. If you couldn't tell by the idea of 10 minutes of me talking about Cleveland and Burke Lake Front Airport, but yeah, pretty pretty excited about that. So anyways, cars only. Now there's three chassis from the CART 1998 season with four different engine types. Uh, first off, there is the Lola with the Ford, uh, which is a piece of junk. The Lola chassis is just garbage and it's just garbage. There is also the Swift with the Ford engine, which is one of the best looking race cars in the history of race cars. And then there is the Renard, which is the best of the bunch, uh, pretty much more or less flatly across the board. Uh, just so as it was in the real world, the Swift isn't bad either, uh, but the Renard is the one to go to. It's got four different engine options you can choose from. There is the Honda, which is the most powerful of the bunch, and is the one that uh, is the engine. As well as the Mercedes and Ford, which are kind of there in the middle ground, kind of like a tier two. Uh, the Mercedes seems to be a little bit of an easier engine to drive than the Ford is. The Ford seems to have just a little bit more grunt, uh, for better and worse. Uh, and then there's also the Toyota engine, which is lacking a good bit in horsepower. It's down about 40 horsepower compared to the Honda, whereas the Mercedes and the Ford are down about 15 to 20 horsepower apiece. Every car is on Firestone tires exclusively. There are no Goodyear tires, like there were back in 1998, as well as there's also no Penske chassis, which was only run by Penske, but was only on the Goodyear tires in 1998 as well, somewhat famously apparently being a surprisingly like really good car, but it had the wrong tires, so therefore it pretty much had zero success and was more or less ended up being the end of the line for Penske's in-house chassis back in the day. Now, astute observers out there will mention that this is basically the Kart Extreme mod ported forward into Automobilista 2. Uh, yeah, kind of, sort of, more or less. It's doing the same thing with the 1998 cars. Uh, you know, really with Kart Extreme, you're getting a much better simulation of the 1998 Kart season in the sense that you have the Penske as well, the Goodyear tires as well, which was... Uh, you know, storyline, you know, when you have a tire war, having two different tires is a thing, and it does matter. And yes, the Firestones were superior, but, you know, it gives you a way to, to handicap your performance if you're, you know, doing too well and you don't want to just turn the AI difficulty up and enable them to cheat on you like that. You know, there's that aspect, as well as having all the skins and everything and the driver names and helmets and all that stuff. It is just a much more complete package than this DLC package, and I'm sure that's going to ruffle some feathers. Uh, you know, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of them leading off with this 1998 package, which is something that, you know, the Automobilista Card Extreme mod, it was free, like everybody had it if you had Automobilista 1, or at least you, you better have because otherwise you missed out, you know. And now a paid DLC, this is the exact same cars, you know, I, I just don't like that look. I don't think that's a great look. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, it shouldn't really matter because the 1995 cars as well as the 2000 cars are coming down the line as part of this exact same DLC package. So it's just kind of one of those things where I, I think right now it, it just seems a little weird. And uh, I'm not sure if I like it, but I'm not sure it's really a problem. It's just one of those things that does have to be mentioned as like a... Uh, due diligence, buyer beware thing type, I don't know what you call it. Anyways, so let's go ahead and talk about driving these things here in game. The first thing that I noticed in my initial testing was, whoa, these things are very front grip limited. Uh, the, the main thing that you're going to have to deal with one way or the other, either setup tweaking, which we'll talk about a little bit later on in the video, or driving style wise, is the front end does not want to uh, want to bite at all. You're going to have to figure out a way to get the car pointed in the direction that you want it to go one way or the other. Uh, either 
doing something with your control inputs, uh, you know, your your steering wheel or your pedals, or alternatively, uh, what I think is what they're going for and the way I was doing it is just driving it with your right foot on corner exit, just powering on out of the corner and just essentially power drifting everything. Can do that and it does work. You'll find that these cars are very slidable and balanceable on power. Uh, and you can do that nice delectable sim racing champ car thing where you feed it out to the wall with a very neutral amount of steering and maybe a little bit of counter steering if required and just have an absolute blast with it and honestly that defines my experience to the large part I really really like these cars because they are very very much fun to drive at its core I really like the driving experience however there are there's an edge case and it kind of has an outsized impact on the overall experience because it's not a huge thing. It doesn't happen all the time, but because I know it happens, I'm not worried as much because I know it'll happen, if that makes sense. You'll understand here. Uh, take, for example, turn five at Long Beach. Uh, it's the, the right-hander after the fountain section, the one where you turn onto the little straightaway. You're basically going downhill on corner exit. There's the curb on the inside. It's very bumpy. It's a very, very tough corner. Sometimes, you know, you go inside and you hit the curb on the inside like way too aggressively and you start the car sliding. I've had times where I've gotten the car like 30 degrees sideways and it's like jackknifing across the bumps. And I know either the car should do a quarter spin, you know, just roll out essentially out the other side to the inside of the corner with like no speed at all or I should probably loop it, or alternatively throw it into the fence on corner exit, it basically pretty much in an instant. Like, uh, you done screwed the pooch, you earned your damage, here's your result. But it doesn't happen. Instead, it's just a simple correction, and it's over and done with, and it, 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 there's no punishment for the mistake. And because of that, it takes so much of the drama away from it. And I think that's the edge case that really hurts the experience. I also feel like these cars are generally just a little bit too good at changing direction. You know, going from left to right. It especially seems to be noticeable at Cleveland. But like, there'll be some times where you can just like fling it one way and then flick it back the other way. It's kind of kind of crazy, it seems like. But uh, the, the thing I really want to get to, though, here with some of these less positive points is I was doing some testing earlier today doing laps at Long Beach half a tank of fuel in the car you know hard tires medium track rubber standard sunny conditions you know nothing normal just cutting laps in virtual reality having a having the time of my life but uh, you know I look at the lap times afterwards and I'm pretty comfortably running you know at the bottom end of the 106s with a car that's more akin to a race configuration you know, look at the real-world lap times from 2000, 2001, 2002, which is when they started using this configuration of Long Beach. You know, 1998, they ran a different configuration, so we can't do, like, a direct one. But, uh, you know, running a second and a half faster than qualifying times. And then it's like, okay, when I take fuel out of the car and put the soft tires on, you know, probably find another second pretty comfortably, maybe second and a half. The fast guys are generally one to two seconds a lap faster than me, and... You know, just based upon my skill level, um, we're gonna be like way, way too quick. Like four seconds on a track with a a 70 second lap is a pretty big differential, and I think it's one of those cases where, yeah, you, know, you gotta have a pinch of salt when you're comparing real world lap times to lap times in a video game because of a, a lot of different factors and track conditions, and I fully understand it. But there's also a window where you have to be close enough, and I think. That's a differential that to me screams like, okay, this is just too far and needs to be brought back. In in the process of bringing it back and slowing the car down, I think you would really probably end up finding out that some of those issues, like the car changing direction too quick, at least for my gut feel, as well as, you know, some of the instances of getting away with absolute bloody murder when the car starts to slide and, and just having no problems at all might suddenly kind of tone themselves down or, or maybe even fix themselves because you're kind of bringing it back down to reality. You know, it's one of those things where 
one thing affects another thing affects another thing, and I think that might be a, a root cause that can have a outsized impact. So that's what I'd say on that sense. I, I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's horrible right now. I just think it just needs a little extra something, and it's going to make this so much better. And I don't say that because it sucks right now, because that's not the case, in my opinion. But rather, I want these cars to be that good because the, the, these are my thing. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, kind of highly biased. But uh, now, as this is Automobile Easter 2 and in typical Automobile Easter 2 fashion, the default setup is less of a default setup and more of just the default settings. You'll want to go into the garage page, in my opinion, and really start to at least try and tweak out some of the traits that the car comes with by default. Uh, first thing first, uh, on the page, you'll want to add some front wing, uh, just to get the aero balance a little bit further shifted forward. Get the front tires to do a little bit more work and, and give them a little bit more things to work with uh, is really a help right out of the gate. Next thing you'll want to do for sure is to go ahead and open up the brake ducts if you're at a track that presents anything resembling a challenge to the braking cooling system because this car will overheat the brakes pretty easily and pretty noticeably uh, you know within a number of laps at the default setting of 50%. Uh, brake cooling is something that you'll need to worry about with these cars which is honestly actually pretty nice to see. Uh, one of the other things you'll want to go ahead and do is probably soften up the front springs just take the default value and cut in half and make that your new default. I, I think the front springs are set up so stiffly because this is a you know ground effect car uh, with a substantial amount of downforce so running the car stiffly to control the platform is, is a thing and it makes sense but the car just has so little purchase <laughs> at the front end that softening it up really actually works out much better in my opinion. Uh, than what they're going with uh, out of the gates. Another thing you can also do uh, if you want to to make power down a little bit more consistent is just raise the the differential power side setting. Uh, I believe the default is 65 degrees on the ramp angle. I'll just click that up, make it 75 degrees, and that makes things a lot less squirmy and fishtaily on power down on exit. Because while you're not going to be struggling, you know, to control the car on exit by default, you know, it's not like super challenging or, or mega impossible or anything the car's very forgiving as i talked about you know getting that consistency is going to be helpful and getting the car to be more what you're looking for hopefully will be more beneficial you know setup isn't just about somehow unlocking the magic settings that make the car go faster but also making the car drive more like what you're wanting to rather than having to drive around certain things so that's that Anyways, a few other things before we close up this video. One thing I do have to call out is the AI performance with this car. Uh, right now, you know, initial versions, of course, is uh, very rough. Like, generally, in Automobile Easter 2, the AI has been performing pretty well uh, from my recent testing, and I haven't really had all that much of a problem with it. It's gotten to be much more consistent than it used to be, and it generally works pretty well, and I, I don't have that many complaints with it, but this car in particular, uh, it seems like the AI are, are really struggling to handle it and control it and, and that might just be a case of needing some more calibration and some more tweaking and tuning. Uh, with other cars I'm generally running like 110% strength, with these things I'm running about 100-102% strength to get them to be more reasonable and I have to turn the aggression way down to, to prevent them from just being absolute madmen dive bombers. So there's that and I also noticed when I was playing around in VR that uh, in typical Automobile Easter 2 fashion, for whatever reason this is a regular occurrence, uh, the mirrors are just totally broken on the cars. Like, I, I don't know what's going on with Reason Studios and mirrors, but it, that seems to be a problem <laughs> where uh, a bunch of cars throughout Automobile Easter 2 have had mirrors that are either been wonky or broken or been reversed and showing the wrong side or... I don't know. These cars suffer from the same thing. I don't know why it happens. Maybe there's a difficulty with the Madness engine making mirrors. But I uh, just had to call out because it is something that I noticed. But uh, overall, I, I won't say I'm 100% like, it's perfect. But I will say I'm, I'm pretty happy with what they got and I like what they got and I'm enjoying what they got. 
but just a few more steps and it's going to make it that much better and because these are my things I, I really want to see it take a few more steps forward because then it's going to be just that much better it's like one of those things where like the last 10 percent makes like 50 percent of the impact and i think it is that last 10 percent that is gonna set it apart hopefully eventually someday so yeah i like it it got me to make a video after like six months i mean <laughs> is it not clear that i like it anyways hope you guys enjoyed I right, bye